Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about or get into Match Edge. And I do use it, especially when I'm dealing with data that's been translated over and I have to make edits. You saw a prior video with that. And I want to talk about some of the little nuances when you are using it, what it's going to do, so on and so forth. This is just going to be the first of a few videos, otherwise this would be an incredibly long video series. Now, do me one favor and please subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, like it as well. It really helps me out. So what I've done is I've set up a couple of splines and I've shown the control points. So you'll note this is a single segment. Let me go ahead and turn that on just because I can. Another single segment, but notice it they are uh, different orders, a different amount of math involved. So with that, I'm going to go and make the surface that is going to string through these. It's just going to be a four-point surface. So I'll pick endpoint to endpoint, endpoint to endpoint. And that is the surface I'm going to work with. When I go into match, I'm going to go match edge. What I want to do is I want to select the edge, which is this guy right here, that's going to go to this curve. Now, mind you, it could be another surface, could be something else, right? I'm just showing you the simplest to define, show you the math that's going on with the match edge and go deeper from there. Now, I want to turn on match exact. So what NX does is it automatically generates the poles that it needs to match exactly to this curve curve and because those are the poles of the curve well the poles of the surface in this case have to match i'm going to leave at g1 and i'm going to apply now i'm going to come in and do the same thing for this side i want to go from this curve over or i should say that edge over to this curve and what i want you to notice is i'm going to say match exact once again the surface has changed a little bit okay notice over here at this end it's deviated the reason is because at this point i want to match to this curve and i'm saying match exact and i don't have a constraint at the opposite end now it says opposite edge constraint g0 and uh, what's happening as you can see is it's pulled away now, if I increase this, what you'll notice is the G0 position on this edge now gets rectified. It clears it up. The reason why it clears it up is because now that surface has enough math to match the opposite edge. This side is matched, and what we see, what's happening is on the surface, is well it at a minimum has to match the most complex curve this comp this curve is a little simpler so the system nx can generate the control polygon it needs to match this curve exactly and as you can see it's got the vectors for the tangency right it's got the tangency all figured out at this end at this end and what happens up here is it adds this is the curve control polygon. This is the surface control polygon as it adds this additional segment to the control polygon. So we know that this matches this curve. Now I'm going to show the control polygon of this guy. Pick it. Control polygon. Notice it's simple. There's no additional math there. There's no knots to be shown. Now as we look at this surface, you'll note that it has the control polygon matched exactly to the more complex of the two curves. Now, in this case, I matched to the more complex curve first, and then to the simpler curve, and then at the opposite end, I had to tell it to hold it at G0 and then increase the math. What you can do, I'm just going to undo, undo, is I'm going to go back into match, this time I'm going to start out with the simpler side. Okay, actually I want to pick the edge. I want to make sure I get the edge. And then the reference is this curve. And I want to say match exact. 
And what it does, as you can see, is it matches it again, exactly. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to pick this to here. Making sure match exact is turned on. And I basically get the same result, but I no longer have to worry about increasing the math of the surface or going any deeper to the rest of the menu, unless I need to make changes to the surface, which is going to be uh, shown in later videos. But because this is the more complex curve, I matched to that second. What I end up with is a surface that necessarily has to be more complex in order to match this curve. And because this curve is simpler, that shape is simpler. Again, I no longer have to worry about ops and end constraint, increasing the degree or the patches or anything like that, because it can match this exactly. It can stay right where it needs to be because it has the math that it needs and in fact, a little bit more, but it has to be a little bit more because of the additional control point over here. And again, when we look at the control polygon of the surface, let me go like this, let me just highlight it, change the color. Let's go to dark green, shall we? We can see the control polygon a little bit better. Again, it matches this end perfectly. We have our vectors off of the curve, which is basically the, the tangent direction. Those are matched. And again, it basically adds in the additional control polygon between these two control points, because these two control points are exerting what it, they need to exert at this other end to match that surface. So depending on how you use the, the, the function, Again, what I like to do as a matter of preference because of what the system is doing, if I have to match multiple ends or I have to be careful with the uh, back end, the end that I'm not technically manipulating, I may have to increase the, the degree of the surface. I may have to increase the complexity of the surface in order to get the opposite end to match. Okay, now if you're doing something like this, where I'm just going to string a surface between two curves, which I do quite frequently. And the reason why I do this quite frequently is because it gives me great possibilities of manipulation and things updating very cleanly with, quite frankly, the simplest surface that matches those curves precisely. So in some instances, I will forego using through curves or one of the mesh surface tools because this gives me, without much finagling inside of the surface tool, it gives me the simplest surface to attain that shape going to those two curves. So this is something that I do use quite frequently and um, use it just like this. It's really powerful. It's very, very, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna dig a little deeper in following videos about this tool and other things that you can do with it.